My name is Pat Appling. I'm so glad you're with me today. I wanted to put another video on YouTube. It's been quite a few years since I put one on here. So uh, I've had a lot of things happening, a lot of things going on, and um, I've gotten my Seascape Masters since I had one on here, I believe. And also, I was in an elevator that fell and broke bones from my head to my toes. And that's another story. We'll go over that in another video, another time. Anyway, today, I'm not really sure what I'm going to paint. It's gonna be a surprise for you and me both. So you can see I have all kinds of colors on my palette. Not sure what I'm gonna use, what I'm not gonna use. So anyway, let's get started. And what I'm gonna do, I think I'll just do a, uh, a great big wave kind of like this just mark where I want it to be and the base of my wave will be probably right around here maybe put a few rocks over here or something like that so let's just get started I'll <clears throat> just basically put some color on my uh, canvas I'm going to use a little ultramarine blue a little bit of um, Ultra, a mixture of ultramarine blue, a little bit of Payne's gray, and some alizarin crimson. Let's just put that in, and I'm using X strokes, and I'm using my medium, which is a lean medium. I like to use lean medium because it uh, dries quicker, and I use uh, the chroma medium that actually comes from Australia. I usually order mine from Dick Blick, and get it in. I'm just laying in color. Right now, I'm not worried about what this looks like. If you paint this part of the picture and it looks really pretty, you're doing it wrong because you just got to get some paint on there. Don't use too much medium. That's one of the main things people do is just get too much medium. So anyway, that looks pretty good. Let's put a baseline in. A, base, a wave is made up of just a few lines. You want it darkest at the bottom. I'm just using Paints Gray for that right now with a little bit of uh, some dirty brush stuff kind of on there. Putting that all the way across. Maybe a little bit higher over here. Going to put a little bit of that going over the top of the wave just for a nice little base color going over the top not doing it in solid just painting just relaxing and having a good time painting should be fun and you know what one of the first things I did after my accident and my life is divided in before my accident and after my accident believe me it's divided in that but one of the first things I did was um, paint a picture called My Healing. I don't have a photo of it with me. I'll, maybe I'll show it to you guys sometime. I think you would like that. I've had a lot of people that have visited me that are, that are like, when are you gonna teach that one, Pat? When are you gonna teach it? Well, I don't know. That's my special picture. That's just my art and me. I threw a little bit of diazosine purple in there. Why not? This is my picture. I'll do what I want to with it. Going, going into a little more <clears throat> ultramarine blue. As you go up a wave, it gets a little bit lighter because the water is thinner there. And hey, you know what I think will be pretty? Maybe even the top. Add a little bit of turquoise with it up there. Turquoise and white. And the white that I'm using has a little bit of uh, raw sienna mixed in with it just to keep it from being quite so white. So you got the heaviest bottom water on the bottom, which is the darkest, it starts getting lighter, then it gets the lightest. And up here in the transparency, this is what everybody loves up here, is the transparency part. I just added white to it. Gonna keep adding white, get it a little bit lighter right up at the top and there's our eye of the wave coming in and this is just underpainting 
just underpainting. Doesn't have to look like much of anything yet. So let's see, let me bring that on over. Yes, I know I got it into there, so what? A lot of my students, they just worry themselves to death in this part of the picture. But let me tell you, it's just like when you're getting ready to go somewhere. First of all, you put your, if you, well, you used to put a slip on. Did you worry if your slip didn't look absolutely beautiful on your body? No, because you knew you were putting your beautiful dress on on top of it. And then your beautiful jewelry on top of that. Then you just go from there. So that's the way it is with painting. We're still putting a slip on this painting. The bear, actually, we're putting our spanks on. That's what we're doing, our spanks. <laughs> and I know, heaven only knows I need spanks. So, anyway, and watch the angle of my strokes that I'm using. Gotta watch the angle of my strokes. By the way, thank you very much, Eileen, for filming this for me. I know I've had you tied up in the corner until you agreed to do this, and I agreed to let you go. That's another story. So, anyway. Let's put a little bit of shadow on some foam for this wave. And this is just my um, lavender mix that I mixed up. Kind of a bluish lavender. I love blue lavender. And I'm going to pull a little bit of this dark up into it. Cool. Look at that. I don't like that line right there, so let me fix it. Gonna get some There we go. Here we're getting it fixed. Have to be careful about those lines where the colors intersect. And I'll go back and fix that a little bit better in a, in a little bit. As I say, we're still putting or spanks on the picture. And I guess that's what we'll call all of our um, underpainting is our spanks, maybe. Sounds good to me. Uh, I learned so much from my teacher and mentor, Joyce Ortner. I got my Seascape Masters from her back years ago. Can't remember what year it was even. I was looking in some of my picture memories today and this week, and Joyce took a few of us out to Hawaii with her. And we stayed with our good friend Eileen out there. And I went out early to help her prepare everything. You know what she did? She took pictures of me sitting by the pool and she wrote on Facebook that I was supposed to be helping her. Well, maybe that's the truth, but that's okay. That's, an, that's another story. <laughs> we had a good time anyway. Painting should be absolutely fun. It should be something that we just get up looking forward to doing for the day. And right now I'm getting my paint spray and a little bit of burnt umber going to lay a few rocks in over here. We'll give them some shape in a little bit. And this is a picture that is completely out of my head. So, I mean, once you learn how to paint a basic wave, a basic seascape, you can start playing with it and do all kinds of different um, effects with it. But today I just wanted to do something very easy and something that we would just relax and enjoy painting. Alrighty, I'm wiping my brush out. I've got a little bit of Gamsol odorless thinner right here, but I don't like to open the thinner. I don't like to use it unless I have to. Right now I'm getting a little mixture of purple and ultramarine blue and white. 
get this a little bit lighter down here. And if you'll notice, sometimes I'm using my brush this way. And if I'm not getting enough paint off quite, sometimes I turn it this way to get in these, fill in these little corners that are being stubborn and not wanting to fill in. And when you're painting flat water, keep your strokes flat, keep them horizontal. If you're painting water that's coming over, Keep your strokes going over. Makes sense. Look at that, we've almost got this, this whole picture filled in. Let's do a little splashy right there. Get a little bit of our... Got a little bit of wave coming in, hitting that rock. How about that? Our canvas is already covered. And I don't know how long we've been painting, but it's not been very long at all. Okay, let's look at this background water. I'm just gonna put an indication of a few little background waves. I'm just loading my brush with dirty white. Not cleaning my brush, just going into my white a little bit. I'm gonna do just a few little indications of water back here it looks like a little background wave let's do another one that one's so much fun we'll have to do another one and just like magic we've got some background waves How's that? Okie dokie. Now let's look at this little crash over wave right here. I'm going into some more dirty white. I love dirty white. And I'm paying attention to the way my strokes go. They should go this way, this way, this way. So many people make them go like waterfalls. That's not what they're doing. They're the water is swooshing. It's, it's gone back up. It's got up, 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 up. Then it's coming over and falling down. So we're making them, our strokes go that way. Let's see here. I need a little bit more medium on here. Now, if you don't like the way it looks when you get through with it, you know what? It's just paint. You can go back over it. Nobody's gonna die if you have to do it again. One of my students used to work at uh, Children's Hospital and she had to do all the lab results for them. And she was used to it. If she made a mistake, somebody could die. And one day she looked up and she said, you know, if I make a mistake, nobody's gonna die. And I have used that ever since. As a matter of fact, we were talking about that the other day. If you make a mistake, nobody's gonna die. It's just paint. That needs a little bit. And I'll go look at that some more later. Um, one thing you want to avoid doing is completing an area of your picture. If I focused on this right here and completely painted it until it was finished, it might look like a completely different picture than when I'm painting on the rocks. So you paint up here a while, then you go somewhere else, then you go somewhere else, and you go back, back. So you keep your picture cohesive. So that's what... That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Alrighty, let's highlight these, this just a little bit. I 
I think I want that to go back up. That helps it look a little more realistic. I love to go to the beach and just study the waves and watch them coming in. Ooh, that's soft. Nice and soft. Still a bit more. A little bit more. And you only get medium when you need it. When your brush feels like it's dragging the paint or something like that, you probably need a little bit more medium. But don't get so much medium that it's slimy on your canvas. Um, I see a lot of people that do that. Hmm. I don't think I'll make that wave just the tiniest bit wider. That's looking better. Okay. Get a little bit more dark in here. All of this under here is in shadow. It's in a lot, a lot of shadow because that's where all of that water is coming down, crashing over it. And again, that's where the water's the thickest. I paint a lot of things, but I tell you what, the ocean just does it for me. It's just my favorite thing in the world to paint. And I live in Georgia. I don't live on the coast. I think I should have been born maybe in Daytona Beach or something. I don't know. Let's highlight these just, this little crash just a little bit. Where it's coming in on these rocks. Here we go, crash, 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 crash. And I'm using the corner of my brush to make my little highlights. And the ideal thing <clears throat> is to finish your picture and let it sit for a couple of days and then go back and really make it look nice, make it look sharp. I'm gonna switch to, I don't want that brush. I'm gonna switch to my little uh, 3 8 inch. Joyce Ortner brush. It's a baby magic brush. And I'm going to highlight these rocks just a little bit. I think I will highlight them with maybe a little bit of brown, a little bit of burnt sienna. Let's see how that looks. This brush doesn't feel happy. We'll try his brother. Because we want happy brushes. So we're using burnt umber, a little bit of raw sienna, and a tiny bit of white. And we're just gonna do some rock shapes. And I'm just doing the, basically the top of the rocks. I'm letting the bottoms of them stay dark. And I hope this is showing up on camera because this makes them look really pretty. And don't make your rocks look like baked potatoes. First picture I ever painted in my life was a picture I found in a Walter Foster book. And it was a great big rock, kind of like cannon rock, sticking up out of the water. And it had two smaller rocks sticking up over here. So I painted that and I was so proud of myself. I, t I had told my mother that I would give my first picture to her 
because she bought me the supplies. And so when I finished that picture, I was so proud. But you know, I went back a little bit later and started looking at that picture. And it looked like a big roast and two baked potatoes sticking up out of the ocean. Well, I still was proud of I never did find out what she did with that picture. <laughs> <laughs> if I had been her, it would have found its way quickly into the trash. Anyway, see quickly we've got some rocks all shaped up. And if I don't like the shapes of any of them tomorrow when I go back to relook at this picture, I'll just change them. It's just paint. Okay, I'm gonna step back just a minute. Ooh, those are ugly. Those are ugly rocks. So let's just give them a little bit of shape. Make one come in there. We're just giving them a little more shape. I didn't have quite enough detail in them. And like I say, I can go back tomorrow and change whatever shape that I don't like. And I do that so often. What you do the first time, you're not stuck with it. You can always go back. I've seen a picture before that was absolutely beautiful that someone had painted. And I got to looking closely at it and realized there was another picture under it. She had painted it and didn't like it, so she just painted another picture under it. We all have pictures that we do that we don't like, but that's okay. All righty, I think that's a little better. Okay, let's go back down here. I think I'll use a half inch brush. And these are Joyce Ortner brushes, and these are great little brushes, especially for seascapes. So I'm gonna go down here. And you notice that I have four different piles of white. I do this on all the pictures that I paint, and the reason I do it is because so many times people, or myself included, I'll have some paint on my brush and I'll go into the uh, pile of white, and it will turn that whole pile of white, whatever color I have on my brush. I don't want to do that. so. I'll say this one, this one stay in white so I don't have to go to one of the others. But like if I got a glob of brown in it and turn the whole thing brown, I could wipe my brush off and go over here to this one and paint with it until I got it dirty. And this way you're not messing up a whole big um, uh, area of white paint. Saves a lot of paint. So down here, I'm going to put in a little bit of forward water. Use some little soft cradle strokes. You know, just a little bit. And then I think I'll switch to my, um, I think I'll switch to my filbert brush. The Joyce Ortner filbert brush. Great little brush. So let's just see going to add just the tiniest little bit of blue to it. And do a few little foam patterns on it. Foam patterns are a booger bear to learn how to do. I mean, most everybody just kind of lips out with them. I know we were talking to Joyce Ortner one time about how you do foam patterns, and she said, you just have to practice. You just have to do it. Uh, one thing a lot of people do is they make them into little worms. They have them very skinny, and they're just like little worms. We don't want little worms. And 
we don't want them repet repet repeating themselves repetition. We don't want them repeating themselves. Another thing, when you're doing, when you're painting your oceans, when you're painting anything, don't hold that brush like this and try to draw things in because it will look like a child has been trying to color in their coloring book. Hold the brush back so you can get to it. These are starting to look like foam patterns. Okay, let's do a few going kind of up here. Foam patterns have to be connected too. One thing I see people do, they'll take their brush, they'll get a little liner brush and they'll go It, 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 it's not a foam pattern. I don't know what it is, but it's not a foam pattern. And if I don't get them light enough tomorrow, I will go back and re-highlight them. A few of them are going back behind this wave. That's okay. Okay, they're looking a little bit wormy. So I'm just going to take my mongoose brush and soften them out a little bit. Now, yeah, let's see, what do we want to do? Let's show a little bit of a, a rock coming through there. Just a little bit, a little ghost rock. And the wave has come down and started crashing in there and leaving just a little bit of a hint of some rocks showing through. They're very ghosty, you don't want them really dark. Let me step back and look at it. Cool. That's yeah, looking super duper. And you know, it is okay to brag on your own paintings. Your paintings are listening to you. If you start saying ugly things about them, they're going to turn out ugly. But this looks to me like a pretty doggone good underpainting. Let's see, do I want to put anything else in here? Just an indication of a, another little foam pattern coming up. Let's do a little bit of a splashy up here. Just a little bit of an indication. Let's put a little, um, little bit of a shadow under it. I still think I need a little bit darker right in there. Okie dokie. Now, um, this has had time to set up a little bit, so I'm gonna go back and pull it up a little bit more, soften it in, because foam kind of um, flows up and down. I don't know if that makes any sense, but it kind of flows up and down your wave. Let's 
get a little more on top right here. You know, um, sometimes when you're painting, you do things just a little bit different than what the actual item looks like. Maybe there's more dark on top of your wave, but it, you need a contrast. So whatever's behind, you want to get it contrasted, whether it's darker or whether it's lighter. Contrast is the name of the game. I think that looks good. So let's just keep it going. And then we'll come down a little bit more and highlight the foam again. Told you I'd be back to there. That's looking nice. Good job, Pat. Uh oh, that's not good. When you make a boo boo, you just wipe it off. And that's okay. Looking good. This might be a good picture for you to try to paint at home. If you do, I do hope you send a copy to me. I would love to see it. My email address is Pat Appling, that's P-A-T-A-P-P-L-I-N-G at msn.com. Very simple. And friend me on Facebook. You don't want too much going on right on the outside of the canvas because you want your eye to stay inside the canvas. Now I'm trying to think, is that line too straight? So, let's see, maybe a little bit of my black and blue. Now, go back over that with some white. I just, just reshaped the bottom of the, yeah, I still don't have it dark enough. Under there. Wipe, wipe, wipe. Now, a little bit more highlight up in here. And I think we've about got a picture. What do you think?
Again, my name is Pat Appling. Thank you so much for being with me today. Now this picture will be perfect to sit overnight and tomorrow I'll go back and I'll relook at it. I'll highlight it. I will put um, darks back in where darks need to be. If anything needs to be reshaped again, I will reshape it. But thanks again and my name is Pat Appling. A-P-P-L-I-N-G. My email is patappling at msn.com. And thank you so much for being with me. Until next time.